Okay. So today we're going to be discussing about the pie builder. Okay. So what is a pie builder? Uh, and before that, we need to know what is a build tool per se. So our agenda will be understanding what is the requirement of the build tool, how pie builder is filtering out. Uh, apart from writing code, what are the things are minimal required before we can ship our application? How we can install this pie builder into our projects? Uh, how we can create our project structure using pie builder module? Uh, what kind of different configuration it support? Uh, and it is like a task based building system. So how can we create tasks, custom tasks? What are the plugin it provides? So basically, uh, when you have created your code, you have tested locally. Now, what you need to do is you need to distribute your code in terms of a package so that it can be deployed. So, for example, you are creating your um, web application, so you need to be deployed to be either into the specific WSGI or SGI kind of a server where the REST APIs can be exposed of. Or you are maybe using Python, you are using TK Inter or PyQt, and you have created a beautiful uh, native desktop application. You like to distribute that as a uh, native package, my right? for case of Windows, it is in GXC. So then uh, also when you are writing the code, as we've seen in a previous uh, session, that we like our code to be maintaining a certain coding standard, formatting, language style, and syntaxes. How we can enforce that in build? Uh, how are we going to be writing? Okay, so maybe also we are written unit test cases, integration test cases. We are wanted to verify what is the coverage before we you know, ship our code. How we can do that in an automated manner? Every time, either I have to do it, I have to manage different custom scripts. Uh, and those custom scripts need to be created by me, either in Python, either in Bash shell, or whatever. And then also I have to keep the detailed documentation of it. So there is no standard way of doing those things. And also for dependency management, right? Okay, fine. We can manage the dependencies using our requirement file that we can do. But also the dependencies, some of the dependencies are not need to be shipped with the code. There are some build time dependency and other dependencies are absolutely needed to be running on the runtime. So how we can differentiate between them? So answer all of this question of dependency management, package distribution, code verification, enforcement of coding style requires a build script. And that particular build tool is one of the build tool that is for the Python ecosystem has been created is known as a pie builder. And how the pie builder works, pie builder is basically a collection of custom, uh, collection of tasks and plugins. So you require a particular feature or plugin for dependency management. The Pi Builder has that inbuilt. And that particular plugin, when you include it into your project code, it gives expose you certain tasks. So for example, I have included a unit test plugin. So it let me run unit test, it let me run integration test. Maybe I have included a plugin for coverage that, that let me run to find out what is the uh code coverage, you know, line coverage, or what is the branch coverage that is there. I wanted to create a distribution of my uh, package and I wanted to deploy it into my own private PI uh, repository that I can also wanted to do. So those kind of things for you require uh, a building tool. Now, what are the other uh, similar tools we have uh, compared thing to the Pi Builder? There are setup tools, uh, and then also there is a poetry. So let's see how we can get started with the Pi Builder. So before we do that, any question uh, related to why we required a build tool to start with? Yeah, no, sir. So, Previously, use any kind of build tool? Uh, no, sir, I haven't. Okay, fine. So, like any kind of uh, this come as a pip uh, module, so you can uh, using pip, you can install that model, pip install. 
Now to create a project structure, all you have to uh, find the command is the PYB dash that start project. Then it will ask me some information related to what is your project name, uh, what may be the other details, and I fill up those details. It asks me where you're going to place your source files, where you're going to place your scripts, custom script, where you place your unit test cases, and that it mentioned, right? And then it creates a similar kind of a program structure like this. So here the build.pi is the based uh, build tool for PY builder. So this build tool is uh, Python based. So if you want, you can, you know, uh, customize that using Python. And also setup build uh, setup.pi, which is basically uh, with which we set up our application. And also there is like a QML file to indicate which version of Pi Builder we are using. Then comes your SRC. Under SRC, you have a main where you have your main application code either in Python, which may be part of your Flux or Django tools, or if you wanted to have some custom scripts on Python that you can also put on the script folders and all your unit tests goes under the unit test framework uh, folder underneath that Python you're going to write that. So let us quickly see an example of this into our source code. So I've created this particular project using PyBuilder. So what I can see, first of all, I see there is like uh, PyBuilder, build.py. I'm going to explain this file. What this file does is basically control how the build going to be happening. Then Py project, it's kind of a project file. It says the which version of uh, what you are going to be using. I'm using the build system. And that is a dependency on Py builder, which may be version 0.12 upwards. And the build backend is based on this particular pip 517 on which it is built. Just we have previously seen the pip 8, which is a popular Python extension proposal for code formatting. There is also for building tool, there is like 517 that's there. Underneath here, we're going to find SRC. When you expand SRC, we're going to see two subfolders. One is under main, one is under unit test. So under main subfolder, you have like a Python and you have your script, right? In Python script, we can put our main application code out here. Any utility script that I wanted to write, I can write out here. And for unit test, I can write my under Python, my unit test cases using unit test framework that is provided. Okay, and then when the build is done, uh, it uh, put under the target folder, and the target folder it also manages its own VNB, right? So it manages all the dependencies separately. You don't have to worry about that. It manages the dependency out of the box. Also, you can see different kind of uh, reports that are generated from either from Flick Eight or Unit Test that you can see depending on which plugin you are running. And also you can find out the detailed uh, logs of installing uh, dependencies that are, you can find out here. If any there is any issue to figure out or resolving that particular dependency. That is more or less the project structure. And project related documentation, you can also generate under here. And that's been the structure that they provide. Okay, out of them. So it is kind of an opinionated how you're going to be structuring your code. And that gives us some structure in to start with my coding. Next option is uh, is the configuration. How are we going to be doing my configuration, right? So all build related configuration we generally do into the our build.pi. So here we're going to be first importing different part that I'll be requiring as a decorators and others from the pi builder.code. And there I'm given the name at the start, the name I've given, the version I've chosen, that comes out here. Then I have like multiple plugins and each plugin exposes a certain task. So which are the default tasks? When I'm going to not mention any kind of tasks, I just simply can execute the build using pi pyp. Then what are the default tasks and in which order they're going to be executed? So some tasks is like clean, which basically clean out your uh, build folder. 
they knew first obviously any kind of project we wanted to build first we wanted to do dependency installation then we want to compile our code then we want to do different kind of analyzation that includes your verification your load linting your unit test run etc okay and here comes is your unit annotation and then the particular decoration it is where you mention your build related configuration out here what things are can be configured out here you can configure your default tasks you can configure your project related information you can configure the dependency that you require right here we can see we are given two dependencies one is a build time dependency we can you pass a project object we can put build depends on by install or build depends on is like a runtime dependency that i'm using selenium so maybe this application is from some web scrapping application and also we can choose what kind of you know plugin that i can choose or use in my uh, pi builder and plugin related configuration also i can put okay so if i wanted to see what are the kind of tasks that have been available right now uh, that's totally depend how many plugins you have used the number of plugins you include the corresponding tasks get updated so you have pyb dash t that gives you okay you have different segment i'm segmented to starts for example you want to clean you wanted to prepare that means you wanted to create your own private virtual uh, own virtual environment then you wanted to compile the source code you want to pin the path where your module and script files located then after that what you wanted to do you wanted to install your dependencies either you can say install dependency it will then resolve your build time dependency your runtime dependency also you can list your dependency that are there and you can also run your test so if you call a verify and these tasks are having like a dependent to each other right so for example if i'm going to be calling verify automatically what going to happen it's going to be first uh, calling the prepare because without the prepare they cannot install the dependencies right you need to have the virtual environment first then it's going to build out different dependencies into that and then you're going to be using that dependency going to be running there. So you can call the verify and then the corresponding unit test, integration test, and coverage. These things are uh, unit test, integration test runs. Or you can also have like a analyze task, which does all of the three. So you can choose either on one, depending on whatever you require. Now, OK, I have compiled my code. I have managed my environment. I have resolved the dependency. I have also tested my code and figured out it's working properly. Now what I can do, I can now publish the application. What can I do step by step? So first I need to create a package of my application, a distribution. So I can call the package task to distribute that, that is PYB package. Then I'm going to be installed locally. I can uh, create a publishing package to be put into some private or public repository of packages. Then I can call the upload. There I can also configure and say this location I need to upload. So that I can mention. So these are the tasks. This is the inbuilt tasks, and the number of tasks get updated depending on the number of plugins you're going to be using. So let's first uh, see some example of configuration. Then we can go one way. Around. So py build or py is the main thing. So what are we first doing? Uh, here we are using different plugins, right? For example, the Python core of uh, Python core is. Uh, Core plugin that gives out the tasks related to compile and another thing. Then you have like a click age that we have previously seen. So here you can uh, use the click age formatting test. You can also choose install dependency that will depend install your board build and runtime dependency. Now we can separate them out. You can also having like a unit test. So you're going to get the tasks out of that that we have seen. That is the unit test, integration test, etc. When you use the coverage plugin, then I'm going to get the coverage tasks out of that. And distributed utility is basically giving me the distribution related that is install, publish, package, and upload. Okay. 
Similarly, EHCC let me run a kind of a command line executable. So there are like different plugins are there. So all the plugins I have to first call which are the plugins I require in my project. Then some project related description, uh, right? What is the license I'm using? Who are the author? What is the description of the project? Where the particular project is stored? What is the summary? What is the project name and version? That is describing your project, which can be used to when you're publishing your particular package. Now here we come, we see that particular default task is there. I can mention the default task or by default it comes up with the default task that is known as publish. So it can take a single task or it can take a list of tasks as an array. Okay. Next comes to your initialization section. We have included the init decorator. So from there we're going to be doing first, I'm going to be defining the build dependencies. So I mentioned that, okay, I'm going to be only using Mockito for mocking out my dependencies. I'm going to be using Py installer. Uh, so these are all uh, Python modules that are going to depend on, but this doesn't go with your project source code, right? So these are like real-time dependency. You need to escape code, it doesn't go or ship as your production deployment or dev deployment, okay? And then I'm be maybe using uh, Selenium as my web scrapping. I'm also maybe processing an XML file, so I'm using LXML that I can define. And then I can you know combine these two in a same project, or I can separate out project specific uh, configuration. Those are basically configuration that is for your different plugins that we are using. So that all the things we put and more into this my builder. Five, right? Defining my plugins, I describing my projects, I describing the what is the default set of tasks. I'm saying the which are the dependencies I require the runtime and the build time, and I can also set additional configuration properties. How the plugin will behave behave when you're going to be executing them. Now say okay, there are tasks are there. Fine, good. Very good, we have to ask for that. But what if I wanted to create my own task? Does the Pi Builder let me extend this? Yes, Pi Builder, do you let you extend to your own custom task? And in this custom task, you can write your Python script to do whatever you want to. You may want it to uh, execute, exceed data into your database, or you may want it to take the backup of data, whatever things you wanted to do, you can write your own custom tasks as a function. And also you can say that this task is depending on other tasks also, okay? So I'm going to be uh, adding two decorator, one is tasks and one is depends. I put tasks and then depends, saying that this task can be only be executed when say I say build installer. This task will first install the dependencies. They are going to be building my installer. Then I can use that uh, build related dependencies and convention using project build depends on that is py installer. And there I can you know execute that into the command line using ehcc and then I can build a uh, Windows distribution out of my code. I can use normal print to say that dependencies have been installed or Windows installer has been created. So this way I can also create my own tasks apart from whatever tasks are there. Now I'm mentioning the list of plugins. So these are the extensive list of plugins that are comes out of the box from the Pi Builder. So they have like a detailed documentation. What are the different plugins they have? And also there are like community plugins are also available because they allow you to extend the particular plugin. So here we can I'm group the plugin in terms of their usage. So you wanted to have like a specific uh, specific test runner. So you have like a specific integration test runner. You have certain deployment. So you wanted to create a source distribution. You wanted to copy a custom resources into your project. Or you want to filter which resources you wanted to include into your project from a particular folder. Uh, you can create a install distribution and uh, this distributes. So those kind of you know plugins when I'm going to be including, I'm going to be getting additional tasks related to that. And similarly for code quality, we have uh, we can you know 
integrate this with the sonar tube. Uh, so that can also be done. And also your images and coverage you can get. And your different kind of linting that are there, that spy checker, pay pay, fill in, phosphate, and pay key, those you can also integrate with. And also, if you wanted to create uh, specific files, so that means your project can be easily uh, imported into your IDs. So currently, out of the box, it supports Eclipse PY tape. That is the Python uh, version building development tool for the Eclipse or the PyCharm for the JetPen. So those tools are also there, which create ID specific files that helps them to manage the project in the integrated development environment. So that means there, let us run some um, uh, plugin related configuration, right? So we mentioned that configurations have been there, right? So what I need to do if I wanted to use any kind of plugins, right? So I have to mention that using use plugin. So I want to be using this plugin. So that is Python dot coverage. That plugin I wanted to use. Now every plugin comes up with its own configuration, right? So those configuration I can mention out here. So for example, for code coverage, what are the important things for me? Whether if the code coverage is not meeting certain threshold, whether the by build will be being failed or not. So I can say that, okay, code coverage will uh, breaking the build or not, I can mention true or false. Similarly, by default, the code coverage threshold overall in a project is limited at 70%. I wanted to increase that to 80% that I can mention up here. I wanted a minimum branch coverage threshold. Uh, if I don't, making that will result in into a warning that would be like 50%. Similarly, partial branch coverage, I will branch coverage, I will require 40%. So those kind of you know, coverage related properties, I can set out of here. And there is like a total documentation on the pie builder side, like what are the individual particular plugins are that we have seen the list and what are the each of the plugin that I want to use in our system, what are the different properties I can override so that I can also see and put that. So that I'm going to put into my init states, like here example, I have given the same things out here, my build coverage, I can also see how I've created my build task. So now let's see how it can be executable, right? So what I have in my source code is a very simple kind of uh, Python script, which is printing out something like hello pi builder into one hello function is there, right? That's simple script that is there. And in the unit test cases that I have, I'm basically imported the hello, okay? And I've uh, created a class, hello world or hello Python build script, and I've extended that unit test test case. And from the unit test test case, I started the test correct message self. I'm going to be using Mockito. So I have included Mockito's two methods, that's mock and verify. So I'm going to mock out the out object that I'm passing inside that output stream object that I'm passing that I mocked out and I just call hello dot out. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to verify the out. That means I'm doing the assertion now has been written with the hello pie build. So that's my simple test case. How can I, you know, verify that here have included unit test so i can write the task for that so let's see how we can you know, do it let's switch to my console and specifically to the batch control that i can see out here so in the batch control what i can do I can first try to run this what are the tasks i can again list through that tasks are available out of the box So the command I'm going to use the PIB. Then I can put say help H C and that will showcase me what are the you know different commands or switches I can be using with PYP. Okay. So these are the different switches that are there. Right. So if I wanted to have more verbose output, I can enable switch V. 
I wanted to print out debug message, so then I can do it. So this kind of uh, details are there. What other things are there? I can, you know, start the project. I can also update the project based on my build description. I can list the tasks. I can list the plan tasks, which the current execution plan exists. I can also see this help. I can also view the version. So fine. So PIBM is my command. So now next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check what are the tasks are available, and I'm going to be, you know, running them one by one. So again, the point to keep in mind that uh, this tasks are executed. I think it is taking more time. Let me try to open up. Okay. So here it comes out. So here it's saying that what are the tasks are available that I've already showcased you, right? Uh, so you can clean it out. You can compile your sources. You can install the dependencies. Oh, sorry, install your published project. You can install build normal dependency runtime and all the dependency can list out you can package you can prepare the virtual environment you can print out those things you can publish and they also have like a dependency on other tasks also when you call in publish then they have like an optional dependency on the coverage and verify you can also have a separate run integration test that depends on the package that you can do right upload and verify everything is depending on the run integration test okay. So let's first uh, do one thing. Let's first, first uh, list what the dependencies that this uh, application has, right? So I just put uh, pub list dependencies. It prints out the Python version and says the build get started. It will take some time. And it's only going to print out the specific messages that are required. Uh, it's not going to be uh, print out everything because we haven't used the switch dash V. That is more or less verbose. So here my build outcome is there. So for my uh, build.py, it figures out I'm using Mockato, I'm using PyInstaller, I'm using LXML, and I'm using Selenium. So those are my build dependencies that I can see. Fine. Now, if I wanted to clean everything, right? Sometimes what happened? I have my uh, virtual environment or my build previous builds I wanted to clean, so I can simply put PYB clean. I guess the build job has started. And you're going to tie the cleanup the tag directory. Let's see after this execution what happens. What is the file for the remove of the error? So what it's going to do, it's going to be going into my project. It's going to be I call the task clean. It try to remove the target directory that is there. Okay. And all the subfiles inside that that we have previously seen. It has like build log, it has a different kind of report in terms of PK, unit test case, coverages, etc. And when it's going to be successful, I'm going to see the target folder is gone away. So I clean my push. So now let's uh, install dependencies, right? So that is the first thing we'll have to do. If I want to do prepare, I can also do that. So PIV is not actually dependent on your virtual environment. It creates its own virtual environment because it, this tool itself needs to be managing its own dependencies. So it's not actually using your uh, virtual environment that you mentioned. Uh, it's going to be internally using its own dependencies. So what is the prepare does? This particular task actually created dependencies and the public structure that is there. And also it's going to be, you know, Processing the plugins that are there, so it's we can also see the plugin version it's using. Uh, for the plugins, what are the packages it need to be downloading? That is also getting downloaded. 
and we can see our target folder is again now reappearing which is you know removed by the clean so these are the packages is actually downloading that is for my plugins that i mentioned the plugins i have mentioned out here right that i'm using all these sort of plugins so they processing the plugins they choose what is the current version of the plugins they need to be installing and also they have created a particular virtual environments okay that you can see under target they have is managing its own pnb so that needs to be sure of and then it uh, also processing the dependency package that are there so mockito py install whatever dependency build time or runtime dependency those are going to be coming inside that okay. so that means under here you can see the vnb has been created and under leave, we can see all the dependents, uh, Python modules has been now loaded. OK. So when it done, we have that dependency is resolved. We have the my target folder also created. Now we're going to next see uh, is that I wanted to do is I wanted to compile my source code. And then I'm going to be creating a distribution out of it. And I also wanted to run the different tasks related to integration test and other. And then I will see if we can get a kind of like a coverage report out of that. So again, those tasks I have listed out out here. For now, we have seen that. Uh, Clean, prepare. Okay. Next, we're going to see the compiled sources. Dependencies are as part of prepare. This has been already resolved. So that has been done. Now we can run the unit test case and coverage, maybe. And then we can see that how we can, you know, build a package, install that, publish that, etc. Okay. Let me take some time to get going. So far, um, any other questions you guys have? Uh, I had a question. Sure. Uh, so, uh, to, when I start the build, does it create a new virtual environment? Yes. Or, okay. So, if I already have a project which is already, I already have created it that in a uh, virtual environment, can I integrate this with the build? Uh, no, um, it basically uses its own virtual environment. Okay. Okay. Because you have you have given the dependency management up to it. Okay. You have okay. um, seen this tool. What kind of dependencies you require? Now the dependency management of that it will automatically do it. Okay. But you can you know link your current project or your ID to that particular virtual environment, and that virtual okay. environment you can use. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And if I wanted to see the logs, I can also see what is the current log that is there. So it has a current log that is there that is mentioned. And this is like a test install logs are also been coming up. Okay. Still resolving those uh, dependencies is using the cache. It will be slow on writing of the ID. Next, we just need to run the unit test cases and the coverage to quickly see that and that particular some of the tasks related to your packages. And then we can take if you guys have any other further questions. Fine, as the things are moving on, it you know printing out. So the detail verbose messages are printed in the back end. Only the particular uh, methods or particular messages, uh, limited messages printed on the front end. But we can also change that. We just need to enable the switch slash V, right? Okay. So as you can see, each of the dependencies is resolving. 
you see now happening to that now it has resolved and it also can give you a message at the end right how many time uh, the task has taken to complete when the task has been finished okay what is the independent task uh, required to complete that also you can give it in a millisecond it took more than that amount of time now what i can do when this stop is that we're going to be running our next task that is we're going to run our unit test run unit test and then you're going to see we can run the coverage of it and here we're going to maybe wanted to use the virtual switch well, let me just open a second So to launch this, I cannot use the PowerShell bash because there is a restriction, right? I think it has stopped. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to run unit test. So the task name I have to refer is a run unit test, then the coverage. Okay. Let's see and can we run If I can you know, run the multiple tasks in a one single command instead of you know breaking down each of the tasks separately. So what is the benefit it gives you? It gives you to integrate with the uh, uh, CI pipeline. So CI pipeline tools require some scripts. Instead of you know writing my own script, I can leverage this pipe builder, and I can perform different sub stages of my uh, continuous integration or continuous building pipeline. Where I'm going to be first going to be check code after code checkout stage has been completed. I can now compile my project, right? After compiling project, what I can do, I can you know then I'm going to be using uh running my unit test cases, I'm going to be finding out what is the coverage report, right? And then I'm going to be also going to be create a build of my package, right? Then I'm going to be also doing a publish. So all the three separate staffs, I have to just mention the command in the specific environment, right? So that I can do. That's the benefit the file builder gives out to the box that you don't have to write too much of the uh, custom code, custom code, or script for building, script for this, all the different uh, shell script you don't have to write. You just include the package, uh, include the plugin, and automatically it give you the tasks available for you to your project. And you can simply run that. Okay. So now it's running the unit test cases, and it also mentioned that okay, it's not able to run some of the unit test cases, and whatever the warning it has, it can show up at the end. It's showing that okay, uh, it doesn't get any kind of coverage. Okay, and it wants if your coverage is below the certain numbers, right? That you have mentioned. Now, in case if you wanted us to be, you know, configuring that, okay, fine. Okay, so it's saying that, okay, I have not uh, able to, the verified step is failed, right? Whatever it is, it has been executed. And that's why it's not able to capture any kind of coverage. Now, if I can go back into my configuration and say, okay, if my coverage is not up to the mark, what I want, I want the build to be failed. Just make this change. And then let me do a rerun of my application. So what happened is that uh, sometimes the developer is in a hurry. He has not done the code testing and he has pushed the code and the code has now lesser amount of coverage that what is the threshold. Right. So instead of that, we wanted the build to be now break. If the coverage percentage or the threshold that we have mentioned are not meet, let's see whether it breaks or not. And then we can simply look into the command or task or 
treatment of our tails related to the package distribution. Also, you can see right when it's uh, building, it's uh, building a sub virtual domain as well. One for build, one for test. Okay, so here when the build is passed, we have to check what are the options we can choose to pass this or fail this that I can look into. But let's now go through the remaining uh, tasks that are required for the installation, right? The install, publish, package, etc. So let's first try to do is first create a package. Then you're going to be doing the installation of that. Package, then I say install. So when I'm going to go for package and install, obviously it's going to be doing some of the dependent tasks. It again going to be you know resolving that particular uh, virtual environment, build and test, etc. So that means uh, it is also beneficial because when you are having uh, the builds done on the CI server, right? You don't and you have make any kind of you know changes into your dependencies. What you don't want is that you wanted to work with the past version. Maybe you have bump up one of the dependency versions up and you wanted to start with a clean build. Then you can also include the clean package. So every virtual dependency, the virtual environment that is under the target, that can be also be removed. Okay. So as we are doing the package is also executing the test. Okay. And then it's uh, showing the coverage as well. So they are like tasks, dependencies are there. Now here we can see it has created a dist folder, and under, under the dist folder it has used the package name and the version number to create a distributed folder out here. So here it's creating a binary distribution out of that. And it's locally, you know, installing that particular project out here. So here we can see the dist, and here is that uh, our total distribution has been created. Okay, that include your hello, that include your script if you have any, and uh, also it has that. Uh, sorry, it has uh, libraries that are that normally are using. So nothing as such so this is the build version and then the package under distribution package you have that uh, distribution of your code uh, available as a tar jeep kind of a format okay. so that being done and then it's also doing the installation of it so that we have seen now, if you wanted to publish to a private repo, that you can do, but there you need to do the configuration of the private repo location, and then you can there publish to that. So, okay. So now here my distribution is done. I have now have a chip distribution that has been created. And if I wanted to see what is inside the chip distribution, I can, you know, reveal that into an explorer and under the disk folder i have the start.jeep i can open up in the any archival code so just to archive inside that there is the dart and there is have a new package name and then your total source code is inside that 
it has a dependency list and other details are obviously mentioned. I'm not going to publishing or uploading it to anywhere. Uh, so any other further questions you guys have? You have seen the plugins configuration. Any question you guys have till now? No, sir. Okay. So you have yes, understood sir. the benefit of PyBuilder? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. So it helps us to, you know, work on our local as well as to do the common verification. Also, we can check that uh, under the target folder, uh, under reports, right? It current day is reporting uh, your coverage, right? Uh, into a XML and a kind of a JSON file. And also, you can see the coverage of your application comes out in a HTML report as well. Let's quickly see that. Okay. So that we can see that, okay, so whatever in a code I've written, I can see the individual coverage of those lines, which lines are actually covered which line actually excluded, which one is actually missing. So from this, I can, you know, get an understanding like uh, whatever unit is I've written, whether it's covering those particular files or not. So Rish, uh, I have one more call to then. So okay. I'll drop off. You can carry on with the training. Okay, fine. Thank you so much. Okay. So that's the coverage report comes out. That is uh, coming from the coverage pipe. And also the same version is available into a JSON format as well as your XML format. That is more suitable for your tools to be using that. Okay. So this uh, is in a Cobertura format. So that can be when you integrate it with uh, SonarCube, this coverage report is uh, beneficial for that. But for you, maybe the HTML coverage make more sense. Okay. Uh, any other question so far apart from this? Uh, no, sir. Okay. So let me stop presenting for now and let me also close the recording. <laughs>